All right. Ladies and gentlemen, new Pragmatic Nation. I don't know why I'm going with the sports terminology, but here we are. Um, it's time for the feedback loop. We do this every weekday morning. Another edition is upon us. We've got Eve in here. We've got Tedril in here. Um, first of all, hats off to Rebecca. I have to give. I just have to like brag about Rebecca for a second. Uh, Rebecca um, has been grinding this week um, on her third interview uh, or third portion of an interview. Like she had two yesterday, um, and then she's going through a, a take-home assignment or just turned in a take-home assignment. Um, we don't properly recognize the 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 lift that goes into the interview process. I, I don't believe we do. We often think about, well, I learn the skills, I learn the skills, and then I get the job. And I, I've i always talked about interviews being a lot like dating. And the likelihood that you're going to immediately like just find somebody to date and say, oh, we're in love, we're getting married. Um, very low, extremely low. And the likelihood that you're just going to find a job and you're like, this is perfect. I'm staying here forever. Extremely low because they also have to agree on the other side, just like, or in just like dating. So, um, to, to have three of those, to have three of those in motion at the same time, I want you to think back if you've ever dated a couple of people at the same time, how emotionally fraught those situations are. You know, you're, you're kind of half in with one group and they're kind of wondering where you stand with the other. And, you know, you're, oh, we're all just friends, but your emotions are tied up in it. Uh, that, that's what this is like. Applying to multiple jobs and having multiple interviews and discussions at the same time. It's the same thing. You kind of want this one over here, but then that one over there is inter That one over there seems more interested in you, but boy, that position over here is really more interesting. Like, I to totally feel like I'm 22 years old or 18 years old, 16, you know, that whole period of high school, college thing, you know, that that's what it, that all takes me back to. I'm so glad I'm not in that game. But yet, we get to play that game over and over again anytime you change a job. So, um, so again, hats off to Rebecca. You're in, you're in the good fight. Um, and the other thing that I, I would also mention is um, when you are not getting the interviews, it's the portfolio. Like, the portfolio is not carrying you across. Um, when you are getting the interviews, it's not the portfolio. It's something else. So, so just understand that that's the, li that that's the line of demarcation. If I'm getting interviews portfolio is good enough that I land at the interview. If I'm not getting interviews, the portfolio is off. It could also be the resume is off. Um, but but nine times out of ten, it's the portfolio itself. So that said, we do have a couple things that I want to jump into. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that we can get this underway. Um, let's start over here at... Uh, yeah, let's start over here at Eve's grid exercises, and uh, she's gone through the. Sh she's um, working on the um, grid exercises. I have cleaned these up just a tad, um, in that um, I, I found the elements a little easier to work with when you break it. In, when instead of having parts one and two on the same canvas, just using pages to to separate those out. So. This this uh this left rail is just a little more manageable. Um, so anyway, so part one here, it's pretty simple. She's it's intended that you find you're finding the margins for the page, and every design that you work on will have will have some measure of margin. Nothing goes edge to edge. So understanding how to how to simply find find that, and when you when you go to code the solution up. This is basically I'm making a container, and the container is going to is going to hold my information together, 
so that it does not just end up at the edges of of the the site of the browser. And um, Eve, I know we talked about this. Um, I believe we talked yesterday. Might have been the day before yesterday. It all kind. Of, it's Thursday, so it all kind of runs together here. But the goal here, as we're working through this, is I'm going to start sprinkling in some terminology um, that kind of leans toward okay, well, how how does this translate over to code? Um, because ultimately, you'll be like, well, what does this container do? This cont the container, and I'm going to hop in here and I'm going to mute the horizontal. The container is just basically setting the boundaries, okay? Much like over here, um, you have set up a grid, and it's interesting, This is, you have gone with the mythical um, 15 column grid. I've, I've, I've never seen a 15 column grid, but but yet here it is and trying to see how the okay so it's got a gutter of 20 it's stretch margin of 70 and the count is it's weird because the count says it's one I don't think it's really one I think it's 15 um, yeah so oh never mind I was I wasn't selecting the right one this one is 15 columns okay so typically speaking over here when when we when we look at grid structures and columns, um, what you'll find in design is that there were two main camps back in say 2012 uh, for for layout. One camp said everything is going to be 16 columns, and the other camp said everything is going to be 12 columns. Now you can see the, uh, right away that f uh, when when we go to 15 you get a structure that actually makes sense of this unit, right? However, this one breaks. There's like no logical definition here. Although it works here for this item down below, right? So that's cool. Um, if we adjust this further, if we go to 12, what's interesting and and oftentimes this is this is a more of a gutter issue than anything, um, but you did a good job identifying, you know, e at fifteen or at fifteen or twelve, these both work, and you found the gutters. Typically speaking, the designs fall into twelve or sixteen. Um, we don't use sixteen nearly as often as we use twelve. 12, if you ever end up using Twitter Bootstrap, you'll use 12. But this could also be 3. Okay? And what's interesting with this is we got away from 12 as a concept because CSS Grid came along. And instead of having to do the math of how many columns isn't... How, <clears throat> excuse me. Instead of having to always add up to 12 which is what happened when we were using using Bootstrap, CSS Grid came along and said, no, just tell me how many columns you want, okay? And in, in working through this, I'll put it back on your 15, CSS Grid gave us the ability to say, you know what, I don't need a, I don't need a, a grid structure for the entire page. I just want you to come along and tell me, and I'll use my mouse here for a second. I just want you to come along and tell me how big the grid needs to be for a given area. All right, so this is like a section, all right? And now I'm gonna create a grid atop a of this section, and I'll make it columns, and I'll make it three. And I'll, I'll make this a little deeper so we can see it. And your gutter is, as you, as you accurately figured out, your gutter's 30. But this is a three column design, and this design operates inside of a section because CSS Grid allows us to do that. The same thing if we came down here and we looked at this section, you know, there's a couple of different ways that we would probably, we could build this, but if we built it with CSS Grid, we'd probably just say, oh, you know what, and you are two, and you get the one, two, and you might not even have a gutter here, which feels weird because um, 
Actually, I guess you have to have at least some gutter. Otherwise, there's there's no um, there's no grid that that will establish itself. And then we get down here, and this is obviously this obviously becomes five. So you you can in fact focus on instead of instead of having to make a fifteen column grid, this is a one column grid. This is your this is your container, it has your margin, and you know, your nav bar is gonna use that, your um, uh, date selector here is going to use that, but then you get into these sections and this is a three column grid, this is two, this is five, and that's what CSS Grid allows you to do. I don't expect you to know that yet, okay? But this is the type of thing that I want us to be able to have a conversation that projects forward for your understanding of how we're going to code it later. And you can ask, we're, we're about to go go work on um, some, some work with Tedril, and she's using CSS Grid extensively. There is no, I'm gonna create a 12 column grid, and then inside of that, I'm going to have to figure out um, how many columns it should break down to. Uh, that that m mental math, while it wasn't, it wasn't exactly hard, it, it was possible to, to do it, it also was just very, ex it was it was exhausting. Um, it wasn't hard, it was just like, I gotta do the math again on this. So I am glad that we don't, we don't necessarily have to do that. And funny enough, um, Bootstrap and um, Foundation, which were the, were the two responsive frameworks that we used to, like we, that, that, that we used to just throw that stuff on everything. I haven't had a conversation about Bootstrap or Foundation in basically forever because anybody creating something now just uses grid and that, that just shows me if I if I stop for a second and think about it how much has have has development changed since 2016 you know in 2016 it was like okay and then you're going to call it in bootstrap and you're going to set up your 12 column grid and we just don't we don't talk about that now caveat there will be projects that you will work on where there will be this 12, I'll, I'll just put it back at 15, but there will be this multi-column grid. And it's because that project was built in 2015. And you'll have to know, you'll have to be aware of the tech stack that that is built against. And you'll probably have to just build new units that leverage Bootstrap to do the thing. Your awareness that that exists is key because there's going to be things that you're not just going to rip out bootstrap because, oh, we've got CSS grid now. That's not, that's not likely, especially if you're just like updating the project. They're not going to want to say scrap everything and restart. They're going to say, can you take an hour and, and add this widget to the homepage? Um, and again, it depends on the type of role that you're in, but most of the things that you're going to work on are probably going to already exist and you're not going to have the luxury of just saying oh well i want to i want to build this with modern web technologies i don't want to use something that was that's from 2014 2013 um and you'll need to be able to work and accommodate those things so your awareness that a 12 column grid exists but also knowing that you know this 15 column grid, uh, that's not that isn't really typically a thing. Now, you could with CSS Grid go in and say, oh well, this is going to be five columns, five columns, and five columns. You could do that, but you go, you could also just as easily say one, one, and one, and make it a three column grid. So, just a little awareness there. There is a second part to this though, and I want to take a look at this. You have uh, successfully figured out that this is basically Pinterest, and you've got a grid, and you've lined these things up very nicely. Um, it's very clean. Uh, this, by the way, um, is something I've had people ask me, so so how hard is it to do a, a Pinterest-style design? Um, there is something called masonry.js that, um, Oh, did somebody take the? Oh, maybe it's not masonry. Maybe it's not that. 
Masonry JS. I'll just search for it. So it is okay. So somebody else is saying. So this is a this is a um, basically a framework that you call in, um, and it gives you a Pinterest style design. And you know there are you know there's lots of different ways that you can utilize this, but but um, I've got I've had questions come across before. Oh, how would I how would I do a Pinterest style design? This is what I would go with. I'd go with masonry, and just be, because I masonry allows you to just instead of having to specifically place things. If I'm not being very specific about the placement, I just want it to flow in like Pinterest. This is what I would do. Um, are there other options out there and available for you? Probably, probably there are. But but you've you've done this and and you did a really good job. We had a conversation about baselines yesterday, and 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 actually Eve has spurred me now to uh, record a video going a little deeper into baseline grid. I, I really feel it's it's undervalued. Um, under, understanding how to use a baseline grid. Um, you know, we all talk about column design and, and getting things to line up vertically, but getting things to line up horizontally is is equally important. And one of the things that I, I you know I want to point out here is it's not just that it's not just that Eve's got the vertical or organization figured out. It's the spacing between elements. You know, the fact that this is really cleanly spaced because she's bothered to figure out, you know that this stops and then it sh the next one should start at an equal space. And you know, the the uses uh, usage she has of rows and columns, uh, it does a really good job of allowing you to, to set up a logical grid, a, a true grid, a grid that like just gives you even spacing all the way around. So I really think that, that you did a good job on this. Um, y it, you did take it further than, you know, the assignment was can, can you um, basically create a grid and align things up and you've done that but you took it an extra step and you put that horizontal grid in there so excellent work there um looks like we got a question oh no that was just somebody that was just couch butt saying that we were live and streaming which we are um let's go ahead and jump in and take a peek at tedgel's work though uh, because she has um oh and by the way the, the baseline example we were talking about was here and basically how the different designs, how the different designs, uh, different line heights uh, really play a role. Um, I believe this was, this was on 56 and this was on 64 and kind of, you kind of get a sense of the different way that the headline can be treated. Um, 24 versus 32. So this was an eight pixel grid. So everything's gonna line up um, by values uh, basically on a on a, a baseline grid of eight um typically speaking i use eight or ten uh but again i'll i'll have a video forthcoming where i i go much more in depth on that um because i am a visual nerd i'm a visual nerd and i think i think this sort of stuff uh, uh really elevates the quality of your design um and it goes right down to like where does my photo end well it, it also ends on the grid so so like this photo I guarantee uh, the height is 392 if I took this in you know I said um, calculator I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fire up my calculator real quick uh, 392 uh, oh, I accidentally hit play uh, 392 divided by uh, 8 that tells me that there's 49. 49 uh, grid lines that I'm taking up there. Um, so, anyway. Neither here nor there, because we're moving on to Tejil's uh, project, but I did want to take just a quick second to talk about that. Also, uh, as you can see here, I have layered in the uh, user flow tutorial to um, to flow, uh, pointing to flow map. It's in the curriculum. I did that for James, and then I did not had not updated it properly so um, that is now there. Thank you, Katie, uh, for pushing forward. Um, we got a, just a lot of people. Mo By the way, APB out on James. I know he's been sick, but we need to find James. James James has disappeared this week. Um, so, James, I'm knocking on your door after this call. It just dawned on me that, wait, you haven't scheduled a session yet. 
Um, everybody else has been in, so kudos to the team. Um, except for Kara, and I know you're overwhelmed. Uh, <laughs> so let's go in here and take a look at Visual Studio Code. Context switching this morning. Uh, let's go here to Tegels Project. All right, so we're here in Tegels Project. This, I, I've got her. They will update that later. Um, let's check everything out. Get status. Okay, well, let's pull in your changes. I can't type, just for the record. I need to. I need to use this more. I need to use this because uh, my keyboard is still it's stuck keys and you know how it goes. All right, Tejels, um, Tejels said her homepage is blocked and ready for review. So she's, we had a conversation and she started kind of blocking out the information and where things were going. Um, she wants to make it live. She was able to go to GitHub settings and make the original index page live, but now it's not working. Need help figuring this out. Okay, so so it's just not showing up online. Okay, we'll figure that out. Also, if someone clicks the logo in my navbar, I want them to navigate to the home page. I tried linking it, uh, but it's not working. Okay, this is simple stuff. Um, simple stuff in my, without looking at it, I say simple stuff. Uh, let's go back over here to index. Okay, so we've got your index here. We've got this. Okay, so you have a class of logo. You've wrapped that in the anchor tag. All you should need is a slash. You shouldn't necessarily need to point to the index.html um, because the index.html is what the browser is going to read first. So if you just put the slash, it's going to say, it's basically saying, just go to the top of this directory and whatever's at the top of it, put, put me there. And that should be your home page. So uh, let's let's work with that theory. Let's go ahead and start this up. Again, I haven't looked at this. Um, if I click here, it should just it just reloads to the home page, which is fine. Um, and she's got her content in here, so everything's kind of blocked out. That's great. Um, got like a read more here, and um, so. We will get in here and talk about typography. Um, the typography, I, I believe it needs to be punched up, but, but we'll, we can discuss that further. Uh, let's go to Bergen. Okay, so there's Bergen, and Bergen's loading. Let's go back over here to this, and it it's struggling because it's like, hey, I don't know how to get to this thing because the index.html, it's your yeah I, I understand what what's happening now you've got this in a in a projects folder and it's trying to figure out and and the projects folder is inside of something called portfolio here at bergen uh yeah you say portfolio slash index if we just say slash and save it and i'm going to go back it's much like your links here to the other pages um your links here to the other pages are, you know, it's finding those. I, I suspect that should be projects slash Bergen, but we'll, we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, let's go back here. So if I go, yeah, pro, uh, so it's finding it and it's finding it because it's currently inside of the projects directory, like where this page exists at, but um, let's go back over here to the logo and that takes you back now. So this is one of those things where I really like, um, using a framework that will allow me to update the nav bar once and then use it over and over and over again. Um, because what I have to do, um, is I have to go in here to idea board and I have to make that same adjustment and I have to remember on all subsequent updates like if I make an if I make a new page um, it, or if I have any other page like this header header.html um, I think this was just a test yeah this is just a test so so we don't have anything really here but here you know now if I go to idea board it's taking a second to load there we go 
Uh, and I go back. That'll get me home. If I go to Bergen, that's great. And I go back. That'll get me to home. So we should have a conversation about about amplifying this. Um, I am interested in inspecting it. Okay, so we haven't gone responsive here yet. Um, that would be... Oh, okay, so it is it is responsive for mobile. Um, I definitely want, want to see you get some more space in here. Um, and, you know, while we're here, let's just take a look at this. Um, so this is, you know, font weight lighter. I'm not sure what lighter is. Um, I'm not sure what... Um, I'm not really sure what Roboto has available to it. It, uh, it reacted to 800. I'm not sure if there's any difference between 800 and 500. There is. Um, there might not be a 500 weight. There's 400. There's 100. Um, I would focus on using the numerical values, and I would also, I would also make sure that. If, um, if you're going with like a, a really lightweight or a really light typeface, I would go up. Um, maybe not that tall, but maybe, you know, a little more. And then it would also focus on the spacing between. So like you've got this uh, margin bottom. I don't think the margin bottom necessarily needs to be here. I think it needs to be down here on this H3. So here, the margin bottom, you've got 0.75 rem. I might make that four, and now the spacing is the the spacing feels more um, more um, appropriate. Like I'm getting the even spacing on both ends. Um, you know, again lighter. You know, is this where I come back with a slightly heavier? Um, no, not in that weight. Um, maybe I just keep it at regular, and I try to, you know. Now I'm wondering, if, you know, okay, so, so, so should that be? No, okay, so there's regular, there's light. I don't know. Um, I also would look at um, letter spacing, and so, that, so that's one. Uh, maybe I do negative point four. I very rarely like like the standard spacing on a on any typography. Um, point two. So there's that, and then if I come back in here with the font size, you know, again with typography. Oh, the other thing. Hi, I'm Tejal. Let's get the. Let's get a real quote in there. If um, hoping this is uh, going to so option shift in bracket option shift opening bracket is a double quote option shift in bracket or closing bracket is a single quote that will get you the a real quote mark in here. Previously you had the, the you know the tick mark thing and that's that's not a real quote. So, um, I don't expect you to go through. There are JavaScript um, libraries out there that will just replace all the all the um, all the tick marks with actual quotes. Uh, but on all your large typography, I would expect you to just have that sewn up. Okay, so there's that. Now let's look at the let's look at the GitHub page question that you had. And for that, I'm going to go to GitHub, and I hope. Um, yeah, I wasn't in test brag. I'm not sure why that's coming up here. Um, but let's go down to, hey, 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 um, yeah, that. Oh, wait, pause. That was a sign up page. I need to sign in. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Please do not have me authenticate right now. Uh, not now. Oh god. The two-way factor authentication. Um, one moment. Hopefully that will come through. Um,
I will have to return and have to go get my phone because that goes directly to my phone. So we will, I'll be right back. Pause, time out. So, we gotta do this thing. Uh, yeah, I'll have to edit this out. So, this won't appear, but that's just an authentication code. Two way authentication, yay. Um, so, but I need to come over here to your portfolio and see what's going on. So, let's go in here to. Hmm, I can't get into settings, even though you shared it with me. That's weird. Um, well, this should be loading now that I've got your actual URL. Uh, let's look here at, um, GitHub. So github.io slash, I think that is it. Well... Should be loading at GitHub. Yeah. Um, okay, so this should be t git sits uh, dot GitHub dot com. Nope. Um, yeah, that should be it. That should be where it's loading. So I'm gonna go in and. Let's look at another project because because I can't get into your settings, I have to kind of go into you know I'll, I'll I'll take a look at Rebecca's real quick. Well, no, I won't be able to get into hers either. All right, so I'm going to go to Electorade. Can I get into the settings for that? And I can't. Um, well, it's forked off mine, so I should be able to get these settings. So you want settings, all right? And then down here in settings, we need to go to, um, oh, sorry, it's got a weird social preview there. So we need to go down to GitHub pages. And right now GitHub pages is not loaded for, for this, uh, but we need to go to turn, to turn this on, I, I wanna turn it on to master. Now you can create another branch if you want to have a branch that this pushes to. Uh, so like GH pages used to be the way that this was handled um, for GitHub pages. But for you, you could just say, okay, my source is gonna be master. And then now the source is saved and it should say, okay, this is published at, and for me it's designhog.github.io slash electorid. And you can enter a custom domain, which would be the domain. The, the domain you enter would be here. There is a bit of work you need to do at the domain register. So if you have your own custom domain, um, then you need to go and go over to GoDaddy or whatever it is and update the A records. And I can help, I can help show you what to do there. But um, the big thing to do would simply be to, to come down here to source switch this to, to master branch and just make sure that it loads. I'm not even sure what's located here. Yeah, so this is just a Gat Gatsby starter default. Um, oh yeah, because, right, I'm, I'm not uh, in the right branch. But um, yeah, I'll just turn ba that back to none, turn that one off because that's not really intended to be a public project anyway. Um, yeah, because with Gatsby, everything is inside of this SRC folder. And the SRC folder, you, you basically, you, you point the settings from in here. All right. Um, let's check back in with the group. See if there are other questions as we move forward. Uh, I'm going to make sure I don't do the common Tegel um, issue that I, I often bring up on myself. Um, I'm gonna add these updates. Um, so update navbar.
So again, with your nav bar, Tejil, it was really just that you were, you were, you had too much information back there to get back to home. Always just use a slash, and that's pretty universal. Um, there's very few instances where you wouldn't use the slash just to get back home. All right, so um, that's marks the end of the feedback loop for today. Um, we do this every every weekday, 9 a.m. ish. Sometimes I. Sometimes some of your questions are challenging. I have to take a minute to kind of properly dissolve them, even think about how we're going to tackle them. But um, we'll be back here again tomorrow morning. So um, New Pragmatic Nation, I appreciate all of your, your questions and help and support. And I will chat with all of you again tomorrow. Take care.